Hey dolls and friends, welcome back and thanks so much for spending part of your day with me. If you're new here, my name is Amber Michonne and I create farmhouse inspired home decor using majority of Dollar Tree or other affordable items. But if you're not new, hey doll, hey. So in today's video, I am super excited. I have my first fall DIY for you all. This video is also sponsored by Cricut, so I want to give them a big shout out for continuing to support my channel in the way that they do. And I am actually going to be using my Cricut Explore 3. So for anybody that is not familiar with Cricut, it is a smart cutting machine that allows you to create personalized projects with hundreds of materials. And it works with a software called Design Space. It comes free with your machine, and this is where you can create your project and browse from hundreds of fonts and images. And once you've created your design, Design Space will send it to your machine to cut. And what I really love about my Cricut Explore 3 is that it uses all smart materials. So that means I do not need a mat for cutting any of my materials. In this video, I'm going to be using some stencil vinyl. Some <laughs> In this video, I'm going to be using some stencil vinyl, some regular color vinyl, and also some smart paper sticker cardstock. I really hope you guys do enjoy this video and get some inspiration. If you have a Cricut, I know a lot of you guys do have some and you haven't opened it yet. I say, sis, get it out, open it up because it makes your life so much easier. Using a Cricut definitely makes your projects look extremely high end. And honestly, the ease of using Cricut and Design Space is really easy. Pretty much. <laughs> If you do enjoy yeah. this video and I do enjoy this Cricut tutorial, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up. If you're new, I love what you see, but also love all things home decor, DIY on a budget, I would also appreciate if you would consider subscribing and hitting the bell right next to it so you're notified every time that I upload. Alright dolls, let's go ahead and jump right in. Alright, to make this awesome fall sign, we're going to start with six painter's sticks from the Home Depot. Um, so two packs, they're a dollar each, and so just two bucks for this, really. And you're just going to put them all together, lay them on the back side first, or the front side, so that the ruler is showing. And then I took six craft sticks and just hot glued them on the back um, to um, get a secure hold, and it held. It, it's going to hold it pretty well. Then you're going to flip it over, because then we're going to paint everything. I have a bunch of these um, poplar board cutouts from previous projects so if you don't have any poplar board you're just going to buy like two of them and then cut them down two different sizes i think one size is seven inches wide and the other one or seven inches long and the other one is six inches long so i have six of those um, pieces and then i have a piece of mdf board from dollar tree it's just a piece that i had cut off from a previous project that i thought would look great as the top you know sign for this large sign so the first thing i did is took my antique wax paint color and just going to color the or paint the entire um sign i used way too much way too much of this paint so i had to go back with a couple maybe three baby wipes and wipe it down just to get that better stained look then i'm going to cover my sign with some brown craft paper if you've been around for a while you know that i love finished projects so that means even covering the back in case you know somebody can see the back in case i want to sell this or something but i always do that because it makes me feel complete <laughs> after i do that then i'm going to paint this sign with some just um, acrylic black paint and i think i did two coats for this and let that sit to dry and this is what all my other pieces are painted i have orange yellow like a powder blue it's called crystal from hazel hazelnut it's crystal from waverly and then a brown and then white so as I'm letting my pieces dry, I'm going to go into Design Space for my Cricut and select my Cricut Explore 3. Then I'm going to click on New Project, and then it's going to open up a new canvas for me. Then I'm going to click on Text on the left, the left side, and I'm going to begin to type the words and the phrases that I want on my project. And then once I have my first phrase, which is Sweet Corn, I go up to the font. Um, and then I just choose the font that I want. I already know the fonts that I want for each of these. So I'm just going to type them all in. You can write them down or just take a mental note of them if you like that font. And then what I like to do is every time that I finish choosing my font, I change the color. So up at the top, 
towards the left it says operation and then there's a color um, box where you can change the color of your text so i always do that and then to make it easy for me i always duplicate the word or the phrase and you just hit duplicate up in the right corner um, and then it duplicates that phrase and then you just change what the phrase is going to be or the word and then choose your font and the color that you want then i'm going to go up to the top where it says size click that lock button to unlock it and then put my own measurements in each of my poplar board pieces is one and a half inches tall so um that's how tall my my words need to be but i'm going to do just a little bit less than that so i'm going to space them out seven by one and six by one because i have some longer pieces and some shorter pieces but this is the best way i feel to get a resizing of the images or the phrases that you have is to unclick that lock so that you can put your own measurements and dim dimensions in there it makes it so much easier after i'm done with my phrases i'm going to click images towards the left because i'm going to search for some pumpkins so i'm going to type in pumpkins in that search box and then search for it it's going to bring me up a thousand results and so then i'm just going to scroll a little bit to choose the one that i want choose this one that has the kind of this swirly thing and then i'm just going to duplicate it a few times put it next to each other then i'm going to select all of the pumpkins and then go up to align and align them um vertically um, because i want them to stay in a one line together then I'm going to go to the right side and click on group so that it's grouped together and it's one kind of image in itself. And then I just go up to the lock button to resize it with my own dimensions. Then I actually duplicate the trio of pumpkins and make one set a little bit smaller than the other. Then I'm going to head back to my images tab, delete the pumpkins word and put autumn market. Um, I have recently seen a few signs that have autumn market or f autumn farmers market. So I thought this would be perfect to do this with since of uh, the phrases and the words that I have. So I just kind of scroll through and pick the ones that I want. They're really only the top two rows that have, you know, what I was looking for. So I chose just a, uh, something a little bit more simple and I'm going with the second one but I'm going to do the second row where it's just black and white so it more looks like the stencils. So once I resize that then I'm going to click make it at my top right corner and it's going to sort all of my projects by my mat on my mats by color. So all the colors that I chose it's going to separate those. Um, and then once it's separated them, then it's going to ask me how I'm going to load all of my materials and I'm doing everything without a mat because I have all smart materials. So I'm going to click on without a mat. And what I like to do is even though some of these, I chose different colors, I know at least three of them, three or four of them are going to be, um, stencil. So I'm going to click the three little dots on the, the word and then it, I'm going to choose move object and then I'm going to pick the mat that I want to move it to because I don't want to waste any vinyl. So I just go through and make sure that it's positioned correctly and then I go through all my mats to make sure that everything is on there correctly and is in the right place and then I am going to hit continue on my bottom right corner. So once my computer connects to my Cricut, then I am going to choose the material. My base material for this, for the first mat, is going to be my stencil vinyl. And it's smart stencil because I have smart materials. Then for my pressure, I always choose more because I just feel like it would go, it would cut through better. <laughs> And then that's pretty much it with Design Space. You are then going to go to your Cricut and hit the buttons that you need to but hit. But this is how the process looks on your computer when it's cutting out. But when you are on your Cricut, you're going to hit the flashing arrows that you need to load it into there. And I absolutely love this roller that I have, this Cricut, you know, vinyl holder roller thing. And then you just click play the play button when it's ready to start cutting and then it'll cut away and then when it's done you hit the arrows to unload it and my favorite thing about this Cricut roller is that you just pull it out or you just before you unload it you can just cut it down and it's cut down and you don't waste any vinyl that is my favorite part but once all of my uh, my vinyl and my 
cardstock is done, then I'm just going to start weeding everything out. The process of weeding with your Cricut, you use your weeding tool to um, peel up any unwanted vinyl that you have down on your sheets. This also includes my paper cardstock, my sticker paper cardstock. I absolutely love using cardstock for different projects. It gives a different type of texture and dimensional like look to projects that I think, uh, I don't think a lot of people really use cardstock that much. I know a lot of people use vinyl, but my favorite two are cardstock and stencil vinyl because I don't buy a lot of vinyl, like different colored vinyls. And I just love the different shades of paint. So that's why I really love um, using stencil vinyl because I can change any project to any color that I want. Once everything is weeded out, now it's time for me to transfer everything over. Also love Cricut's transfer tape too. I love it because it has the nice sticky value, but it's also really easy to use and then just reuse as well. Now that I have been getting used to using it more and figuring out how I need to use it, it's gone a long way. So after everything is transferred over, then I'm just gonna take my paint brushes and my various colors of paint, which are gonna be white, a burnt umber color, um, and a yellow, and I think just like a, a caramel color for my larger sign. And I'm just gonna paint over all of those things, and I gave everything two coats. For my larger farmer's market sign that'll go at the top, I also painted the outside around the border so you could see a little bit better what the sign was and I thought it just gave it more of a rustic farmhouse touch that I absolutely love so I did that and I only I just did it like a heavy dry brushing on that because I knew I was gonna sand heavily sand everything down so um after I did that I placed my pumpkin images onto one of my little planks and I alternated the pumpkins one large one small one large one small and so on and so forth until I had five that fit perfectly on to that plank then I am going to sand down all of my little planks and I just use my finger sander to give it some heavy heavy <laughs> sanding you guys i really wanted this farmhouse rustic look really really good and then i took um a couple of different brown like a light brown and a dark brown and just kind of distressed the edges and then distressed a little bit on the inside of it and then heavily distressed that large farmer's market sign um to where you could see a little bit of the white the black and some of even the brown mdf board on the uh, middle as well then i just kind of wiped everything down to get all of the dust away now it's time for me to assemble everything and i just kind of randomly place everything but i do alternate the lengths of the plaques um, of the planks so the fresh dram is a little bit longer than the sweet corn and so on and so forth then i just hot glue everything down into place where i have it and that is it for this fall sign i absolutely love it i think it is adorable i actually plan on putting this outside by my front door on a table um when it rains of course i don't have a covering over like my door so i'm gonna have to bring it inside but i think it's so so cute it's just adorable it was super easy to make it was literally it cost me two bucks because i had to get the paint stir sticks but y'all how adorable is this Makes me feel this way Don't know what you do Hold my hand Could you hold my hand Look me in the eyes You and me Yeah, that's all Alright dolls, that's all I have for you today I really hope you enjoyed this video If you did, make sure you give me a big thumbs up As it definitely helps out with my channel's growth Subscribe if you haven't already And make sure you head down to my description box below there you find the link to all the cricket materials that I have used in this video. Be blessed, stay safe, and I will see y'all on the next one. <laughs> Bye! Why is that so amusing? I don't understand. I see it. <laughs>
Sorry.